COVID myths, coronavirus conspiracy theories, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Today, we're discussing it. COVID-19 has been around for most of 2020 and still in 2021, here we are learning more and more about the virus every day. There's a lot of misinformation out there circulating on the internet. I get a lot of heat in my comment section regarding different theories you all have. I'm like, where did you hear that? No, wrong. People also think that I'm just saying certain things because I'm left or right or just an actor doctor. Stay healthy, my friends. That makes me laugh. As I see it in the emergency department, there's only patient's health to keep in mind, and the only sides I see are life and death. So I want to make sure that my patients and people watching this receive the best possible treatment, care, and information they possibly can. So that's why today I'll be discussing some of the top 10 COVID myths and wild conspiracy theories that have been circulating the internet ever since the pandemic hit. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm an ER doctor. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you are informed about the latest medical information out there. Myth number one, we can achieve herd immunity by letting the virus spread throughout the population. Not really. For those of you who don't know, herd immunity occurs when a large portion of the community becomes immune to a disease, resulting in the spread of disease from person to person to be unlikely. As a result, the whole community becomes protected not just those who are immune. There are some significant problems with relying on community infection to create herd immunity to the virus that causes COVID-19. It's not even clear yet if the infection with COVID makes a person immune to future infection. If it does not create immunity, herd immunity will never work. Even if COVID-19 does create long-lasting immunity, which I hope it does, a large number of people would have to become infected to reach the herd immunity threshold. And by and large, that means that 70% of the US population, more than 200 million people, would have to recover from COVID-19 to halt the epidemic. This amount of infection could also lead to serious and potentially long-term complications and millions of deaths. If many people become sick with COVID-19 at once, the healthcare system could quickly become overwhelmed. And let me just say, as someone who works in the emergency department, it's already overwhelmed at the time I am making this video. Myth number two, there are no long-term effects of COVID-19. While most people with COVID-19 recover completely within a few weeks, some people, even those who have had mild cases, continue to experience symptoms after their initial recovery. We've seen this in elderly patients and those with serious medical conditions, but also healthy individuals of any age group. The most common signs and symptoms that can linger include fatigue, shortness of breath, loss of taste and smell, cough, joint pain, and chest pain. Other issues come from organ damage to the brain, heart, and lungs, leading to strokes, heart attacks, and possible blood clots in the future. As I've said before, much is still unknown about how COVID-19 will affect people over time. Myth number three, only the elderly or those with underlying health conditions will get seriously ill and require hospitalization for COVID-19. People of all ages can contract the coronavirus. Here's the deal. As you know, patients have the right to privacy. We have laws that protect patients. In other words, the news or whoever is covering such an event like a pandemic, they can't just come into the hospital to report on what's going on. Unless you end up coming to an emergency department and see it with your own eyes, you don't understand the full severity of all of it. My hope is that you don't listen to the gossip or certain shock media outlets, but rather to the healthcare providers who are dealing with this pandemic every day. So back to the statement at hand, only those who are elderly or those who have underlying health conditions will require hospitalizations, false. People of all ages are being hospitalized with COVID-19. Myth number four, spikes in COVID-19 cases are because of increased testing. The rise in infections is not related to increased testing. The greater concern than the number of tests being performed is the increase in the number of people who are sick and requiring hospitalization. This means that the virus is quickly spreading in our communities. COVID-19 testing is crucial as it helps people make decisions to self-isolate and guides healthcare providers' decisions for medical treatment. Widespread testing also allows local health departments to monitor the virus's spread and make recommendations to schools, the community, and businesses. Myth number five, I'm currently taking antibiotics so this may prevent or treat COVID-19. No, antibiotics treat only bacteria, not viruses. COVID-19 is caused by a virus, 
Therefore, antibiotics should not be used to prevent or treat. Now, you may have seen reports of hospitalized individuals receiving antibiotics. This is simply because they could be fighting a bacterial infection at the same time as COVID-19. This is seen similarly with patients who are hospitalized with the flu and are treated with antibiotics to cover bacteria that could be also co-infecting that patient. Myth number six, COVID-19 can't survive in warm weather. Not quite. Many had hoped that COVID would just miraculously disappear as the summer months approach this year. Yes, in retrospect, it could disappear if temperatures reached 158 degrees Fahrenheit. A study published in the Lancet Microbe looked at how temperature affected high amounts of COVID-19 in the laboratory. The researchers found that the virus was killed after five minutes at 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. Despite the fact that the virus does not do well in the heat, the hot summer temperatures seemingly do not affect it because here we are again in 2021 still battling the virus. There are other factors, however, that may play a role when the weather is warmer, including exposure to sunlight, better vitamin D levels, and less gatherings in enclosed spaces. Myth number seven, COVID-19 is no worse than the seasonal flu. Though it is true, both are contagious respiratory diseases caused by viruses, and people with COVID-19 and the flu may share similar symptoms, COVID-19 and flu have been found to affect people differently and have differences. COVID-19 symptoms generally occur between two to 14 days after exposure. Flu symptoms, on the other hand, usually appear one to four days after exposure, even as soon as 18 hours. With COVID-19, you may experience loss of taste or smell, a side effect not commonly seen with the flu. Coronavirus appears to be more contagious and spread more quickly than the flu. Additionally, severe illness such as lung disease or lung injury may be more frequent with COVID-19 than influenza. The death rate also appears to be higher with COVID than the flu. COVID-19 can cause different complications than the flu as well. Blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, and rarely multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. Myth number eight, fabric masks do not protect yourself or others from COVID-19. Simply put, wearing any type of face covering does help slow the spread of COVID. If you want me to make a video demonstrating it, please let me know in the comments. Research shows that some people with COVID-19 lack symptoms or are considered asymptomatic. These people may not know that they're transmitting the virus to others when they talk, sneeze, cough, or raise their voice. You should wear a mask to protect others and they should wear a mask to protect you. Recent study just came out that 59% of transmission is from an asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic person. Myth number nine. COVID-19 is an invented pandemic to cover the effects of 5G radiation. 5G is the fifth generation mobile network being rolled out across the United States. The belief that COVID and 5G are connected comes from a long standing myth that wireless signals can sicken people, specifically with electromagnetic sensitivity or that they weaken your immune system. There is no evidence to support these claims at this time. COVID-19 is a real virus that has affected the lives of millions worldwide. Lastly, myth number 10. Wearing a mask will increase the amount of carbon dioxide I breathe and will make me sick. For many, many years, healthcare providers have worn masks for extended periods with no adverse health reactions. The CDC recommends wearing masks while in public, and there are a ton of very breathable options out there. There is also no risk of hypoxia, which is lower oxygen levels in healthy adults. Carbon dioxide will freely diffuse through your mask as you breathe. If you feel uncomfortable in your mask, try to limit your talking and breathe through your nose. That will reduce the humidity level in your mask. Take me for example. I wear an N95 mask every day for 12 hour shifts and I'm doing just fine. Here's my final thoughts on this. When you see a post on social media, don't assume it's true, but it's super important to read news from trusted websites such as the CDC. It's a great way to stay informed without being misled. And you can always send it to me and I'll check it out. That's been a quick COVID myth busting breakdown with me, Dr. Wagner. Do you have any other COVID myths that you've heard about that I didn't mention? Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification. That way you tell YouTube that you'd like to see more videos of mine. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.